Hi, my name is Sharul Hamdan and I'm your UKC Chairman Candidate for the year 2013-2014. I look forward to working with you guys again for the better future of UKC. Thank you. Hi, my name is Daniel Gafi bin Ahmad. I'm running for UKEC Chairman for this year. So if you're ready for a new UKEC this year, then you should vote for me. Thank you very much. My name is Muhammad Zulkan bin Ayub and I'm currently running for UKEC Chairman. Let's reinforce foundations and revive ideas. Thank you. Go. Hi, I'm Muhammad bin Razman and I'm your Chairman Candidate for 2013-2014. I believe in building stronger platforms and achieving greater heights. Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening, a very good morning to everyone actually. Uh, thanks to everyone for coming to uh, UCL early this morning. I know I'm grateful for everyone to coming this early, you know, seeing that it's a Sunday morning. So today we'll be having the chairman's debate and amongst the four candidates, so on my left it's Mohammad, Sharo, Daniel and Zoli Huan. And how today's debate will be, it will mimic the town hall debate format where basically I will allocate five minutes to each candidate to briefly introduce themselves, why they're running and also their aspirations. And after that, I will open the floor, questions to the floor and from, that, uh, from then we'll carry on. If there aren't any questions, then I will proceed to ask questions to the candidates myself. So with that, um, I will begin with Zuli on my right and I'll proceed to the left. Zuli? Okay, sure. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day to everyone. My name is Muhammad Zurika bin Ayub and I'm currently studying at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. Talking about my early involvement in students' activities and also students' activism, I got an early exposure throughout my time in high school, college and also in university. I was a, a debater back then in high school and that itself has taught me about the art and the beauty of trying to get the message across people. I also organized the first international summit by students and that itself has taught me about leadership and also organizing skills. But there is a fine line that we have to draw between gaining what we have and also understanding the lessons that we have got along the way. And here, I learned two basic things. The first one is about effectual leadership, in which you try to get everyone in your team to create a more dynamic team, rather than in the form of hierarchy. I also learned about executive planning, in which you need to make sure people in your organization are totally aware of what's going on, as well as trying to understand their role during that event and also in organization. However, there are certain things that you learn, for instance, that you know will benefit you 20 and 30 years down the line. The life lessons <laughs> that have moved me has shaped my personal outlook so far. That is always to do what is right rather than what is glamour. To, to actually understand that we try to benefit the beneficiaries of the organization rather than following the crowd. I also learned to find reasons in everything that you do. Hence the reason why I think I have a lot of time to understand what UKEC is all about. Let's move to the second part about my motivation to go for UKEC chairmanship position. I had the privilege to know people, one of the <laughs> pilots of UKEC, the late Adlan Benan Omar, as well as Rafi Zirabi. I also had interaction with FES, for instance, because I'm currently the regional chairman for Scotland, as well as with Shawa. It's so amazing for me that an organization that has been doing so many things for the past 19 years can remain with the same identity and the principles. And this is basically the soul of UKEC itself. Hence, why my tagline is about reinforcing foundations as well as reviving ideals. Before we can make a, any change or before we can conduct any other events, we need to understand what are the foundations of UKEC as well as understanding why UKEC is there in the first place. People, the beneficiaries of UKEC, the students themselves, do have different thoughts. How we put the different thoughts into perspective and it's the job of UKEC to translate that perspective into action so that everyone can do a change later on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Zuli. Uh, Daniel? Hi. Right. Yeah, Assalamualaikum and Salam Shah semua. Very good morning to uh, Chairman for this year for UKC, Mr. Faiz Abdul Rahman, and to all the committees. All right. 
Okay, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. Me, myself, Daniel Kafi bin Ahmed. So currently, I'm doing Masters in Advanced Software Engineering at University of Leicester. So for your information, uh, I've been here just for one year. Yeah, almost one year, not even one year, <laughs> right? So before this, I'm doing my bachelor's in University of the Naga National in Malaysia, <coughs> right? So I'm going to share a, a bit of myself, right? So ladies and gentlemen, I've once have been help my fathers to do a packing for a 5,000 packet of cooking oil in just one night in his small factory. I've once helped him to sell bread baby sounds and I've once helped him to operate a mini market. I've once helped him to I've once helped him to operate a small restaurant which is, I can call the right or warung which is last only for two years. I've once helped him to sell clothes and I've once sell the Siburo, uh, with my younger brother to earn money, pocket money which is my younger still do it even he has finished his bachelor's degree. I fought sell Murtaba in Pasar Ramadan and I fought involved in non-commercial advertisement for the recycle campaign in 2002 for the TV Pendidikan. I fought win a court case when I was 18 years old which I have to turn up at the court at Putrajaya for seven times regarding the accident case. And I, I've once been a singer manager, which is the singing itself is my brother. And it's actually it's quite hard and difficult to be in that industry if we move on our own, if we are independent. And now I'm writing an article for Charita Prantau for New Harian Metro newspaper regularly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not ask all of you to do all these things. Because if you have options not to do this, then you don't have to do this. But what I'm trying to say that it's maybe from my past experience, it might help. It might help me a lot to have a better understanding how to lead UKEC, and maybe a better idea how to lead UKEC, right? And from my past experience also, it might help me to get to all the problem that UKEC might face in the future. So as I am always lead people and giving ideas, so I think that's why I'm running for a chairman UK position. I think that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, Sharul? Hi, my name is Sharul Hamdan and I'm a UKC chairman candidate for the year 2013-2014. I guess the best place to start on how I'm going to introduce myself is I will tell you guys what are my experiences in UKC prior to me running for a chairman. I was a UKC junior executive under the deputy chairman's portfolio. And basically what I did had, had a lot to do with Supreme Council members, connecting their Malaysian nights, nice, Malaysian games, these kind of things to promote, their, the more, promote awareness about what you guys actually do. And other than that, I did a lot of um, a wider kind of range of jobs, such as I was in, involved in the careers fair, I was liaised with CIMB, and I also did the Malaysian Student Leaders Summit. Back home, I was lucky enough to work with FES to call speakers such as Ambika, Nur Iza, and Tony Fernandez, and that's, that's most of the stuff that I actually do in UKC. More on my personal side, um, I actually grew up in a mixed race family. My mom is Chinese, my dad is Malay. Um, I'm probably one of the more unconventional members of UKC, mainly because I didn't really go to a private school or I didn't really go to a boarding school. I actually went to this school called Taman Bukit Mallory in Kepong and then I got a scholarship by Securities Commission to do my A-levels in Taylor's College, Subang and then now I'm here in London. And, you know, when I say of me being unconventional, I'm not trying to say that or oh, just because I come from a different background from the usual type of UKC member means I'm better than them or anything like that. What I'm trying to say here is that I believe that UKC also attracts people like me. I think that UKC should diversify in terms of how they recruit their members and how people like me who don't really come from the necessary background that is very exposed to the politics and all the jazz about UKC and how we're very important. You know, we can attract those kind of students. That's how UKC should diversify and evolve, in my opinion. And um, also my main point here in this whole debate is what I'm gonna say, what I'm gonna say is mainly how I'm gonna connect my ideals with stuff that are very general, very rhetoric, subjective, and connecting it with processes that are very concrete and short-term goals that we can achieve. And mainly, 
I would just want to say that I think UKC should be more inclusive rather than being exclusive. So thank you very much. I thought to myself, I'm not going to do this because I want the power. I'm not going to do this for the name. I'm not doing this to enhance my CV. The reason why I decided to contest was because I felt UKEC was swaying away from its original principle, its founding values. I felt that UKEC had this, um, it's been dragging this reputation of being elitist. I felt that UKEC has all this potential, but it's not living up to its name. So, if you ask me, rephrase my answer, I'll tell you, I believe that UKEC can be guided back to its fundamentals. I believe UKEC has this potential that we can fulfill. And I believe with my experiences, being in the Executive Council last year as Regional Chairman, I believe that because I was in the Supreme Council as President of UE, I can use experience, I can use this knowledge that I have of the very bottom, knowledge of the very bottom of the, of the organization and utilize it to progress UKEC. I believe that when I talk about progress, I talk about the Executive Council and the Supreme Council working hand in hand because I believe in a more unified and a stronger UKEC. I believe that when we are stronger and we are unified, we have this sense of purpose. We can move forward and we can progress towards a more dynamic, a more open, a more transparent UKEC. And I believe that this is something worth doing. I believe in the past year when I worked under uh, the Deputy Chairman's portfolio, being a regional chairman, I've learned that, um, I've learned and observed from Razin on how he worked on the grassroots of my region. And then I've learned from Fez on how he worked on the top part of the UKC, working with sponsors, working with VIPs. And I believe with this experience, I can make UKC better and I can progress it. But what is most important is I believe UKEC is something worth doing and that is why I decided to contest for chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mohamed. Okay, with that, we've um, come to the end of the introduction and now I would like to open the floor for questions. So, do we have any early questions from members of the floor? Uh, yes, gentlemen. Hi. I understand that. I'm uh, oh, sorry, Alan, can you introduce yourself um, and who whom your president is? Uh, my name is Derek Jong. I'm the president of the UCL Malaysian Society and I'm addressing this question to all members, uh, all candidates. Sorry. Um, I understand that many of you might not be studying in London and you might not be based here. Um, I also understand that uh, many of the UKC events are actually held in London. and. Um, I also know that UKC actually um, pays for your trips and expenses. I want to ask you, um, okay, this may be uh, obvious, but obviously I think the money can be spent better elsewhere. So uh, what's your response to this? How, how would you deal with this? Um, thank you to Andrew. Thank you to you for the question. So I guess uh, if you're asking about my personal commitment, uh, even as the going to be the chairman for UKC, I guess there's no question about that because I was and I am currently the regional chairman for Scotland. And I have never failed to actually come across, come down to London for all the activities that are being held in London, for instance. But I guess let us redefine the question back. I mean, what you are trying to say is how UKEC itself can function when the chairman is not around. How can UKEC itself can organize events in London, for instance, when the chairman is not around? I have been doing a lot of research, research that for the previous five years, the only chairman that comes from London, there is only one person. For the rest of other four chairmen, they are not from London. First, for instance, from Darwin. Um, Hakka, for instance, from Warwick. But what is more important to ensure the dynamic of the team itself, to make sure even when the chairman itself is not around, I will try my best to engage with my team, regardless whether I have to be in front of the laptop during the lectures, regardless whether I have to send a lot of emails, but the contact that I need to have 
is very, very essential with my committee. And regarding about the spending that we have to do, firstly, that is why executive planning should come into place. Because everything you want to do, you have to plan, for instance, a month ahead. That itself can actually cut the cost of travelling. Because regardless which chairman will be um, the next chairman of UKEC, there will be people who need to travel to come down to London. So that itself, executive planning is very important to make sure that you keep the, back, the budget or the financial status of UKEC in place. Thank you so much. Anyone who wants to take the question next? Daniel? Oh, All okay. right, uh, to, thanks to Derek for the questions. So from what I understand from your questions is how we are going to deal with this kind of situation, with this kind of constraints, the money, the distance. <coughs> okay, as I am from Leicester, it's actually quite far for me, honestly, three hours and I have to spend my money. But I'm thinking of the commitment itself. So. My answer is just simple. Maybe sometimes we need some sacrifice. I mean, like, we don't get anything that we want in this world. So, it's just a bit of, we, we say that pengorbanan. As for you being a chairman and to lead people, that's what, that you, that's what you want, you have to do as a chairman. <coughs> Thank you very much. Mama, you like to show? All right, thank you for the question. Um, first of all, I think you did not mean um, commitments away from London. I think you meant, I have a different perception of what, a different interpretation of what you, your question was. I think you were addressing the more financial uh, aspect of our spending. First of all, um, and I will also address what Zuli just said. When it comes to spending, I, it's my personal view that we must minimize the spendings of our executive council. It, for example, when we buy tickets, when we have to come down from London, you can just buy a railway ticket, you can plan, pre-plan your travels. That, has, that is what has been done in the past. And I think the committee this year has done a good job in minimizing our spending. And I feel that they have also done a good job in terms of leaving a certain amount of money for the incoming committee. So in that sense, we maintain financial stability and we have this um, certain amount of money that we can use when the incoming committee comes. But it all comes back down to whether we can minimize the spending and whether we can um, pace ourselves in terms of where the money goes. Because if everybody pulls their weight, I believe that um, UKEC system structure as a whole, when we come down to London for events, even though we're from Scotland, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's all about financial planning. And in terms of Zuli's uh, interpretation, uh, chairman being outside of London, I believe that it doesn't matter. It, it all comes down to how you plan your time, how you manage your time. It matters because when UKEC has its full committee, everyone can do their job and everyone does their job properly we can progress and we can work together as a team and UKC can be complete. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Sharon, the last one. <coughs> okay. Um, first of all, I want to let you guys know I'm not going to use my position of being in London as a selling point to you guys. What I'm trying to say here is I can give you the facts, the pure facts, okay? Reimbursement of trips happen not only in the Executive Council, like what they all said, it also happens to the Supreme Council members. When we call people to come to London from Bristol, Scotland, wherever you come from, we pay for your trips to come and vote and to participate in our meetings, etc. So I think that I can give you that facts, okay? Include the reimbursement of Supreme Council members as well, okay? So that's one. And number two, it's a fact that companies, huge companies, corporate sponsors, or politicians, anyone who is, who is influential, who wants to reach out in UK and to have meetings in UK, if you want to start planning, it happens in London. I'm sorry, but it's a fact. It really does happen in London. But I'm not going to say that, okay, just because I'm in London, I'm going to use that to my advantage. What I can tell you is, regardless of all this 
um, talk about how it's so London centric and thing. I, I listen to those concerns. I understand that it cannot be so London centric because it's going to be very difficult for everyone to come here all the time. So what I'm trying to say is I think the Executive Council and if you guys looked at the list, the Deputy Chairman, the only candidate who is Lucas, he's also from University of Birmingham. And Chairman, the fact is the Chairman and Deputy Chairman trips are reversed. So what I can say, if I were to be in London, Lucas or anyone else would not necessarily have to come down to London and burden our accounts. So those are the facts. But these are the things I can tell you, and these are the things that I think that we want to know, and any, any kind of Malaysian society want to know, what is the funding going, uh, where, where is the funding all going to? Is it going to be spent on people's trips, or is it going to be spent on proper projects that we can actually enhance for the next year? So those are the facts. You guys decide. I'm not using those facts against anyone. But those are, those are the things that really happen, and I'm being transparent about it. So thank you. Okay, thanks to all the candidates, and thanks to Derek for the question. Um, next question from the floor, please. Yes, Rebecca. Hi, uh, I'm Rebecca. I'm the Chairman of the National Prize President for as well. Sorry. Um, and my question is, as you can obviously see, there is a glaring disconnect between the UKC Executive Council and the rest of the students, because obviously, you are the chairman of the next council who's going to represent thousands of students in the UK, but only perhaps 20 or 30 people are here in attendance, which reflects again the guy disconnect. What practical um, steps will you take to engage students on a grassroots level and to make sure that they understand and appreciate the presence of UKC in their, their university life in the UK? Thank you. Okay. Um, Thanks for the questions. So actually, for my vision, if I were elected as a chairman of the UK, is to make sure, before I answer your question, just to make sure that UKEC is well known, well recognized, and well respected by the people from many other countries, and mostly Malaysian students in the UK. So and I want to make sure that UKEC is a true and honest platform. It's a really it's a platform for the Malaysian students in UK. The question is, is UKEC is a true platform for the Malaysian students in UK? Adakah UKEC ini benar-benar merupakan platform yang sebenar pada pelajar-pelajar Malaysia di UK ini? Since most of the Malaysians do not know what is UKEC itself. Alright. So, um, from these problems, if I were elected as chairman, I might do more works in which I have to do a promotions to let Malaysian students in UK know what is UKEC actually. For example, I might deal with the universities, all the universities in UK, to ask them to promote the UKEC as a big association in the UK for the Malaysian students. And that's one for one example of what I'm going to do for the promotion for UKEC. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, okay, based on this whole idea of how we're going to make UKEC more famous or more relevant, as, you, as Rebecca said, the amount of people in this hall could reflect that kind of problem that you have. Okay, I'm going to approach this on two fronts, and these are on my manifesto online. First of all, what we need to do, we have to develop more personal relationships between the Malaysian societies. Not necessarily booming it online, not necessarily putting it on, like getting a lot of likes on Facebook. What we need is those personal relationships. Like, I have personal relationships with certain AMSOCs who are, happen to be my friends or anything like that. So I think, and I have friends who are from rival organizations of UKC. That's how you make UKC more relevant. You gotta make, make people understand that, hey, we're not here to fight. These are people who represent certain organizations, and this is what UKC is about, and that's what that organization is about. And that's the same for Malaysian societies. Malaysian societies think that, I don't think UKC is relevant, I have to go there and make, make myself known that, hey, we can have a personal relationship instead of being someone who says that, okay, do this for us, we give you funding, and then you do your own thing. So that's, again, that's very factual. I think personal relationships are very important, and it's a matter of me approaching you guys, and obviously you guys approaching us also, and those are the, that's the first main subjective goal that I put in my manifesto. Now moving on to the solid concrete plan that I have. The solid concrete plan in my manifesto, what I said is, regarding the Project Amanat Negara um, plan that we have, 
basically every January we have a Project Amman uh, event that's something like MSLS, which is Malaysian Student Leaders Summit. We call people to come, we pay for their flights to come and talk and all these things. So we get 10, 20 speakers. And that is great. What I'm trying to say here is, if you want to engage the students more, instead, and this relates to my decentralization point later on, but what I'm trying to say here is, instead of doing Project Amman as a one-day event, at a one-place event, and pay for all the food and pay for all the trips, why not use that as a one-month tour initiative? What I'm trying to say here is, let's make Project Amman a one-month thing. And we go to different regions throughout the month. For example, let's start small. Okay, let's start with four regions. So, for example, when I want to do Project Amman when I want to engage your grassroots members, make UKC known to you guys, let's, for example, let's just go to Manchester, for example. And you can call people who are in your region, maybe like Sheffield, Lancaster, um, and those kind of universities that can utilize us going there. So instead of you guys always coming back to us, why don't we go there, organize any kind of event that you want. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be something so fancy like foreign speeches or whatever. It could be just student debate, something more engaging so that your grassroots members and all the Supreme Council members who are going to watch this video, what I'm trying to say here is your real grassroots members, your first years, your fresh years who don't know anything about it, we approach them by organizing those events at your region. So that is my solid plan. Instead of, imagine, instead of paying for a hotel in central London and paying for your trips to come here, why not pay for just certain few people to go there and organize events for you guys at your region and move throughout UK, maybe like four regions and then come back. Then your grassroots members will know. Then your grassroots members will know, okay, UKCIG comes to us and this is what they actually do. And then we can have things like interaction between the executive council, you want to be chairman, I can speak to your grassroots members, etc. So that is my solid plan. This is how I connect my ideal of what I'm trying to say, personal relationships, to something concrete as this project Amman Agara plan that I've just said. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. I guess in this case we have to be a little bit realistic. That UKC is not everyone's cup of tea, for instance. However, that is totally not an excuse why we cannot work hard, why we cannot let ourselves to reach everyone. That is the reason why we need to understand the fundamental reasons why UKEC is there in the first place. This is what I'm going to propose to you. That it is not a new idea in the sense that we create more events, but we strengthen back what we have, the four portfolios as well as the flagship events that we do have. UKEC for throughout 19 years have been financially stable to maintain its financial status even though we have to organize all these flagship events. So why we bother to focus all of these flagship events? This is the reason. This is because these flagship events do have the soul to it. We take a simple example, Project Amanat Negara. We need to understand why Project Amanat Negara is there in the first place. It's about people giving the Amanat the trust to you. It's about people getting to tell you that you need to come back to Malaysia, for instance, to do a change for the country. Regardless whether it's politics, social, economy, it's always about making a change. Hence why the name itself is Project Amanat Negara. So let us make Project Amanat Negara, for instance, into more like regional events. Where is, what's the difference between what we already have, the ministry talks, the speaker's talks that we have? So what I'm trying to do to say, my idea is very simple. We have a new approach to what we are going to do. We look back at the flagship events that we have. Because these flagship events, Project Amanat Negara, MSLS, Carries Fells, Carries Fair, these are all the events that touch the heart of people the most. The second part how we want to actually get connect better with the students is always to empower our regional influence. What I'm trying to say right now is that my position as the regional chairman, I could see that there are several glitches that we need to address. My scope as a regional chairman is limited to be only the medium to connect the central committee with Malaysian societies in your particular region. So what we are going to do today, we give more freedom for the regional chairman to organize more like regional based events. Hence, why and there is a reason why and I mean how we can actually connect better to the students. As well as that, we also need to understand the reasons why UKC is there in the first place. It's always about addressing three different things. 
non-partisanship, intellectual development, as well as students' welfare. All of these uh, particular objectives of UKEC do connect directly with the students. How? Firstly, intellectual discourse. If you are very interested in the intellectual development of yourself, do come and join our events. We will create more regional events like Bus Corner to be a build-up for the flagship event so that you will not only understand what Project Amanat Negara is all about, but to have a more meaningful flagship event. That is basically my idea. Second thing, I would introduce what we call as a contingency fund for the students in distress. We take a simple example. There was a case of student in Ireland who was diagnosed with cancer. I asked myself, where was UKEC during that time? We claim we help students. We claim we take care of the welfare of the students. But where were we during that time? That is why we have a contingency fund to actually make sure we cover all the reasons why UKEC is there in the first place. If we cover so much on the intellectual development, how about the welfare of the students? How about our so-called non-partisanship? Non-partisanship itself is not just about collaborative efforts behind the scenes. It's also about taking stance in national agenda. It's also about taking stance in national issues. So what is non-partisanship? To always take stance in the principles of being fair and justice. We take a simple example, the chairman's statement by FES, for instance, regarding the incident in UUM. Why did FES come up with a statement like that? It's not solely for the political reason of which sides did he choose. It's because in the principles of the freedom of speech. We need to view things from the angle of being a citizen rather than a political entity. So what are we talking about national issues? It's about imagine yourself, you are going back to Malaysia, for instance, earning 2,400 ringgit Sorry, by having to pay. Okay, sure, thank you. Okay, thanks, Julie. Um, <laughs> Sorry, cut short. It's fine. Right. <laughs> now we'll move on to Mohamed. <laughs> thank you, Rebecca, for the question. Um, I feel the reason why students are so disengaged with UKC is because of the perception that they have that UKEC is only for the elite. I believe that UKEC needs to address this problem. UKEC needs to go back to its roots. UKEC needs to be more relevant in the events that we do. We need to diversify in the events that we do. We need to go beyond just politics. We need to go just beyond economics. We need to engage in the um, community-based events. We need to engage in more social events. We need to have an influence in the regions that we want to. Um, we want people to participate. People want to get involved in. We have to maintain our relevance there. And I believe in three steps. I believe, firstly, we have to have presence on the ground. This involves traveling. This involves actually being present. This involves maintaining your influence, maintaining your relevance in the specific region that we want to be in. Secondly, I believe once we've, has, once we've had that grasp on that region, we need to work hand in hand with the Supreme Councillors in that particular region to make sure that every person in that region is proportionately represented and the events that we hold there are relevant. And when we have events, when we choose, when we decide to have the events in that particular region, we need to advertise, we need to promote what we do we need to have um, the help from Supreme Council, the help from the Executive Council to ATOM through Facebook, through Twitter, through our newsletter. And once we've got that, um, once we've got that amount of people wanting to participate, we can have students coming back to UKEC thinking that UKEC is relevant and thinking that UKEC is um, good for them. Thank you. Then we have to, yeah. Uh, so I would like to have some comments regarding the questions. I think the problem of the UKC actually itself, uh, most of the Malaysian students do not know what is UKC. Come on, it's a simple. 
if you do a survey from observation, you ask 10 people, students, what is your GAC? Only two of them know, which is 20%. Come on, we just go to basic. That's, that's the facts, right? <coughs> so regarding the personal relationship, it actually does, does not really helpful, you know? Come on, be logical. Imagine, re personal relationship. We have to do a promotion, like a big promotion for our UKEC. If we want to do this, kita mesti buat betul-betul. We have to spend money. We have to ask funding. Yeah, please, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for keeping it short and sweet. Okay, um, now for the next question from the floor. Yeah. Um, hi, I think I'm like many of you here. I'm actually still in college, and I've actually not really taken an interest, but I. But unlike my other friends, they don't even know what UKEC is. They don't even know it exists in the first place. What do you think, or do you even think that it is a, a viable option to reach out to these college students? on uh, making them aware about what UKC does because it is after all these people who are eventually going to go to uni in England hopefully and uh, be you know the, part, the next UKC uh, committees and um, so I was wondering if you thought that you know if it would be a good idea to uh, expand your reach down even to college students especially those in the uh, A level years. Thank you. I think we'll start with Moma. Uh, thank you, question again. Um, I believe student activism expands beyond. I believe that when we talk about expanding our reach, expanding beyond what we are comfortable with, we have to accept the fact that um, UKC is more than just about politics, it's more than just about economics. We have to maintain our relevance, we have to be strong, we have to be unified. And once we're unified, we'll be recognised thing is, UKEC is something that is there, but it's not living up to its full potential. UKEC can be more than what it is. UKEC can be bigger than what it is. UKEC is there for a reason, and I believe if we progress towards that reason, if we come back to our fundamentals, if we come back to our um, foundations, our values, and we will be recognised, we will expand beyond just university students and we will come back to championing uh, student activism. Thanks. For the past one week, all I did was just trying to understand what UKEC is all about. Even though I know people in UKEC, even though I am currently the region chairman of Scotland, but for the past few, but for the past one week, what I did was making phone calls to most of the Supreme Councils I would think that I would lie if it's not about buying votes. Come on, we have to be realistic. But what is more important to have a meaningful conversation on what UKC is all about? <coughs> what do they think about UKC? And that is why what I would say is that to understand the foundations and also the source of UKC back. Getting back to your question about how we want to reach to the grassroots or to the bottom of people, to the bottom line of this particular organization. <coughs> Firstly, you need to understand that for one organization or for one society, they have to be affiliated with UKC. Hence, the reason why what we are going to do today is that to empower the regional influence that we have. <coughs> How are we going to do that? That is one thing that I'm going to address, to actually make sure the job scope of regional chairman can be further expanded than just having to send emails, to be the medium person between presidents of Malaysian society with the central committee. Because what you have to do is also to develop, it's not really personal uh, relationship, but it's to make sure that you are more approachable. Yes, I didn't travel that much, but that doesn't mean that I don't care about UKC. What I'm trying to say, I'm not going to travel from one university to another. Because again, you ask me, am I going to be too to political enough because I'm still a student and there is commitment to studies? And the second thing that you will ask me, where do I come, where do I get the money from? Because I am being sponsored by Bank Negara Malaysia under the Kijama Scholarship to study medicine. Of course, I do not have the money in the world to go around the UK. But again, it's always about to make yourself more approachable. Which is why, in my region, what we were doing is to develop a more approachable way, sending all the emails to make sure people know about us.
to actually make phone calls to all of these presidents of Malaysian societies to understand what's the role of UKEC itself. And that is what I'm going to propose. If we want to reach to the bottom of UKEC, we need to actually empower our regional influence by giving the freedom to regional chairman in terms of organizing events to make sure that we do have regional events rather than focusing their role as the medium to relate back to Malay President Malaysia Society with the Central Committee. Okay, I'll be concise of my plans of how to address your college um, influence, UKC's influence colleges. Again, in my manifesto, I put it as what we want to, what, what we want, actually want to do as a new step forward is to work with UK student unions. So if you know what, like how student unions work, they don't necessarily only work for universities. It also goes, it expands beyond colleges, universities, and these things like they have. Actually, you have like Eton College, if you know Eton College in the UK, they have student unions and stuff like that. So I think instead of just approaching universities, if you approach these student unions, we can actually also engage with those like people like yourself, people who are looking to join UKC but are not really sure what can UKC, what can UKC do for them. So instead of saying, you know, expand on emails, expand on our communications, let's focus on something more concrete, something more achievable in the short term. So this is in my manifesto, I put it out since the first day of campaigning, and this is how I plan to engage with the college students. Engage with student unions, do anything that has to do, that's a bit more international. Instead of being in this Malaysian bubble, look at the Malaysian students in the UK, uni uh, colleges who have not actually gone into university. Because most of us come from Malaysia, but then you know, some students also get the privilege to study here in colleges here already. So student unions, like, that's my plan. That's how we engage with college students. Simple as that. So thank you. All right, last week, Daniel. All right, sorry again, can you repeat the questions? Uh, no, sorry. Um, I was just wondering how you would try to reach out to college students um, if you were chairman of UKC, and if you think that should be an option at all for UKC. Right. So as I said, the first thing is we have to solve these problems in which the students, the Malaysian students, do not know why see UKC. Most of them. So we have to find the best way. There are many ways. So for now, the best way is I think to reach each university and to tell them about all about the UKEC. Seriously, I mean like we have to be like really tell them what is actually UKEC. We have like really to do the work. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. It's a simple thing. Okay, thanks Daniel. Uh, next question from the floor please. Yes. Hi, um, my name is Kyle. Um, and my question is addressed to all my candidates. There's three parts of my question. Firstly, um, I would like to know what the candidates know about ICMS and what are they going to do to bridge ties with ICMS. And the third part of my question is, what are your future plans with ICMS? Okay. <laughs> when you hand it like the question first. <laughs> <laughs> this is also something that's obviously very sensitive, but I think I've got to be transparent with you guys. I have friends in ICMS. I have good friends in ICMS. They are capable people. They are amazing individuals. They do a lot of great events. And what I see is myself from a UKC point of view, I don't think we should be right. I don't think we should be at loggerheads on who, you know, who, which sponsor we want to grab, etc. I think it's very easy to group both of these organizations into one bubble. But essentially, I think these, are very, <coughs> these two organizations are very different. I think UKC, you know, we have a, a very different kind of structure in terms of we have Supreme Council members. And ICMS is a, a bit more independent in that sense. They do roadshows, etc. And what I'm trying to say here is, my plans for UKC and ICMS relations, I'm open for it. It's simple as that. I'm open for the fact that we should work together. It should not be a rival kind of thing that goes on, because essentially we have to be humble enough, UKC needs to be humble, humble enough to understand that there are people that are also going to try to do what we do, but there are also people who are going to do things differently than us. And that does not mean we have to always compete. For example, ICMS at the FPPC competition, public policy competition, that was great. It was something very different. UKC was not involved in it because we don't even think about it at that point. So these are the things that I think UKC should respect. UKC should respect ICMS has this strength. 
Okay, and let's not be rivals there. We have our own thing going on. We have careers fair going on, which is one of the biggest careers fair in um, in UK. All the people come down to London to you know apply for internships, etc. So when you ask, what am I going to do with ICMS and UKC? We can work together. Same thing is what I'm going to tell anyone else. For example, I'm no London girl, whoever, girl, friends of Pakistan girl, whatever. We are open. We respect you. We are humble enough to understand that you guys are different from us. And we want to work together with you if you have a chance. Thank you. Um, when we talk about ICMS, I think we all need to go back down the roots of what we believe in. ICMS is about student activism, and so are we. ICMS is about empowering students, and we believe in the same thing. I believe that ICMS should not be viewed as a, comp as a rival, but it should be viewed as a competition should be viewed as a benchmark in which we should um, compete upon. We should be on the same part as XMS. Although we are 19 years old and you, XMS is three years old, XMS is picking up the pace. XMS are taking the sponsors away from us, but that does not matter. Because at the end of the day, it's what we want to do for the students. If we want to talk about how we can empower students, we talk about how we are relevant to the students, students will come back to us, it doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, it's about the foundations that we have, and it's about the values that we believe in. Thanks. So more or less, uh, actually I see as an UKC, we, we have almost the same, more or less the same point. So still being just a simple one, we try to find a way to work together, the best way. I'll uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, and I'll be doing it. Thank you. You know, this is quite a very sensitive issue, and I did like a lot of uh, communication or a lot of uh, research about ICMS, and also speaking to people from ICMS. Both ICMS and UKC, our beneficiaries are the same we contribute to students. There is a reason why I choose the word beneficiaries for instance rather than stakeholders because stakeholders refer for UKC ourselves. We refer to corporate sponsors, government, opposition and also the students. But what we are going to do is always to work together along this line to make sure that we benefit our students. So getting back to your question, I guess it's all about making UKC more approachable regardless which sites do you choose or which political entities or any other organizations that want to collaborate with us, we do welcome them. But of course, we respect your ideology, we respect the values that you bring, you also have to respect them, do believe, uh, do respect the values and also the belief that we have, which is non-partisanship, uh, students' welfare and also intellectual development. However, that is not the only thing that we should do. Because for me, the idea of having UKEC, ICMS, and also um, several other students organizations is not just about the collaborative efforts that we have between these organizations. It's not just about to work together behind the scenes, but also to go beyond that. Like I said, going back to the point I mentioned before, it's about non-partisanship taking stands in nation issues. What we mean again by taking stance in nation issue, like I say, is everything. It's the issues that concern you. It's the issues that you are going to face in the future. Like I say, imagine yourself going to Malaysia with 2,400 salary, having to pay 1,000 of the bill. 1,000 of the bill. So this is also about the issue of housing, the issue of GST, and also the freedom of voice that we have. So we need to extend beyond collaborative efforts. What we should do more is to extend on taking stands in the national issues. So my, my, what I'm trying to say is that there is no problem to collaborate with any other organizations, but we do have to extend beyond the collaborative efforts as well, and you do have to respect the values that we are holding. Thank you. Thank you. Now, allow me to interject the questions from the floor. And picking up a point from Mohammed and also Zui, they spoke of plans of including regional events, and that comes into mind the financial states of UKC. So I ask the four of you, what are your plans to to strengthen UKC's uh, financial core as of now? So, to any candidates who would like to take the question first. 
Dan ini ulang juga pas. Alright. Alright, as, as usual, a simple answers. Alright, so for the financial step here, yeah, financial is one of the most problem that not only association face, I mean like individual also. Right? So to cater these problems or to overcome these problems, again we have to find the best way. In which in my mind now is we have to ask for more funding. <coughs> That's the best the best way for now. Yeah. We might we might have any other ideas after this, but for now is thing is the realistic thing is we have to rather instead of doing events or charity events, we have to ask for funding. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to Fess again um, for the question. Uh, talking about the financial status, I do have to admit uh, I've been taking my time to review all the financial report. That is why I see that the idea of contingency fund is very feasible and practical. In addressing your question about the financial status of UKC, we need to take and work hand in hand with the ambitions that we have and also the reality of UKC itself. Hence the reason why the tagline itself is about reinforcing foundations and also reviving ideas. What we are going to do today is that to actually make sure in terms of the focus and the financial um, status that we have for all these portfolio, or for, for, um, for portfolios, we need to make sure that we give the same weight and also the same focus, especially in the same financial, in the, in the, in the form of finance. Because in the end, we want to make sure that we give equal balance. We balance out everything that we want to, to achieve. The UKC Catalyst, Carriers, um, Connect, and also um, UKEC Cares. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do today, to do today, I will be closely monitor the financial status that we have to cut unnecessary spendings that we do have. If you look at the financial report, which will be made available to you, of course, I don't have the access to financial report, it's just, you know, last two years, maybe you might question about my integrity, for instance. But if you look back and go during AGM, there are certain spendings that we can cut, for instance. So that is the essence of maintaining the status of our finance. Second thing that we should do is always, always make sure that we know where the money goes. And again, it goes back to the concept that what we should do <coughs> is always about executive planning. You cannot expect to call out the Supreme Council telling them, for instance, one week before. Then you need to reimburse them a lot. So executive planning a month earlier before telling people to come down and reimburse them is very, very essential. And this is the most efficient way on how you, might, you want to manage your finance. Let's be realistic again. We can talk about getting more funds and more funds, but the long-term effect is always to make sure that you plan everything ahead, to know exactly where the money goes, and to make sure you try to cut all the unnecessary spendings that we have. Thank you. Daniel would like to go on. Sorry, I forgot to say. For, uh, just now, I said ask for more funding. It's not actually like we don't have money, then we ask funding. We don't have money, we ask funding. No. What I mean is, we calculate exactly how much for this and how much for these things. Which one is the most priority, which one is the least priority. That's how it works. And from that, if we don't have money to spend on the most important things, then we have to ask funding. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Now, um, Mohammed would like to do this. So, <coughs> Funding, I believe UKC needs to be strong. I believe we need the support of the Supreme Council and all the other students behind this. I feel that with the support of the students behind this, we can use this as leverage to our sponsors. We can use this as negotiating power when it comes to asking for funds, when it comes to funding. If we are strong, we have this uh, influence, we have this relevance, people will keep coming to us, we'll be more attractive to our sponsors. Our sponsors will want to come to us. And when we have this amount of money, we cannot have this complacency where we, um, when we just use the money uh, recklessly. We need to have a budget. We need to minimize 
the spending of the Executive Council and the Supreme Council when it comes to travelling. That being said, I would like to <coughs> congratulate the current committee for their financial stability and I feel that the incoming committee will have the current committee to thank for. Thank you. Thanks, Mohamed. And Charo? All right. I have two... Um, I, how I'm going to structure my answer is basically this. I think there's an offensive part of our financial strength and there's a defensive part of our financial strength. This is the way, these are the ways that I think we should go. Okay, on the offensive, what we can do is that we've got to approach corporate sponsors. Obviously, we have to make sure we sell them. I'm sorry, we've got to sell ourselves to them, sell our image, right? But what I want to do if I were to be UKC chairman, I want to change our approach. I want to switch our approach. Instead of saying, hey, we are connected, we are diverse, we are, we are established, right? 19 years or whatever. Let's switch that. Let's say, hey, we have 15,000 students in the UK. We will represent them. We are neutral. Tell them these kind of strengths. And then they will come to us. And obviously, you can't expect them to always want to sponsor us. What we have to do, we have to sell you guys in a, in a weird way. You're going to sell that you guys are under us. This is what we need to do. Instead of saying UKC established, UKC has been on for years. You know, UKC is very, very good. Like, for example, I don't think that's a very viable option. For example, as Muhammad mentioned, how ICMS got a sponsor that was previously ours, right? So I don't think that kind of image of saying that, oh, we're great, we're great, it's going to last forever. I think we've got to switch that. We've got to make sure we focus on our real strengths, which are the students. Bring back UKC to you guys. Say that, hey, got 15,000 students here. You want their CVs? Come to us. That's why we have our careers. Right? <laughs> so on the defensive part of my answer, the defensive part, what I've got to say is that we've got to cost safe. We've got to save our costs. Exactly like what I said, sorry. Exactly what I said about the Project Ahmad Nagara plan. Let's cut on the cost of all these fancy hotels and all these fancy reimbursement trips. And let's cut it down. That's how we maintain our financial strength. So I think my plan is solid enough by saying that I take into grant, I make sure I take into effect both different approaches that we have. We must be defensive in our cost saving and also we have to be offensive by saying that let's sell our students, let's sell our approach, let's sell our influences. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, hey, we got a great image, sponsors. I don't think that's going to be viable. Okay, all right, so thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. So now, next question from the floor. Okay. Perfect. Hi, right, uh, we need our class. I have two questions, actually. The first one is for all four of you. What was your motivation to decide to run for chairman? You know? Did you wake up one morning and decide, oh, I want to run for chairman? You know? What was the turning point to run for chairman? Second question is for the three of you, except for Daniel, I think. Three of you have been a part of UKEC the year before. You know, so you say UKEC is a bit too inclusive, you know. Very, sorry, exclusive, you know, like. But if the three of you were to win, it reinforces the stereotype that you have to be in UKEC for you to be the chairman. So, you know, if you win, you know, it's a catch-22 situation. How do you break that stereotype? So, yeah. Yes, thanks uh, Just for information, Arafat was the chairman for UKC yeah. for the term 2009-2010. So now proceed to the answers. We'll go with all of us. Thank you, um, My motivation is the same as like I said at the start. I believe that UKC can be further progressed. I believe that UKC is something worth doing. And I believe that UKC with the right guidance can go back to what it once was. Can go back to the fundamentals, can go back to the founded values of what UKC is all about. And in order to address your second question when you talk about UKC being very exclusive to just what UKC, to the people of UKC. I was in the executive council as regional chairman and then subsequently I was elected as the president of UE. So I have had the opportunity to work from both the bottom of the organization up to the very top. I believe that in, with my experience being in the Supreme Council, I understand what Supreme Councilors need. I understand what students need as a whole. I understand that when it comes down to organizing events, what we need to do with the sponsors that we have to please. I understand when it comes down to just doing um, what we have to do for our society. It comes down to catering to the needs of what our society is, um, what we want as a society. We need to move forward and we need to think beyond just UKC and it doesn't matter if you weren't a part of the UKC because UKC is open for all. Thank you. Thanks, Mohamed. Uh, now we'll proceed to Cheryl. Great. Thanks, Rupert. Uh 
Okay, my motivations of wanting to run for UKC chairman was solely derived by the experience that I had as a junior executive. And I didn't wake up one morning and wanted to do it. Obviously, it was maybe a few months. But what I'm trying to say here is that experience of being involved in that bottom, bottom up approach. Because I had to do things like I'm sure all of us did. So we had to carry boxes and you know very unglamorous stuff. Carry boxes and call speakers and do fancy stuff to wearing suits and stuff. So I think that whole diverse range of doing stuff for UKC for a whole year, just I guess if you guys believe me, just I develop a passion for it. I develop an interest of saying that okay, I think UKC can be something that's a lot more relevant to you guys. I think that UKC can. I think there are a few points of strengths and weaknesses that I've identified since I worked from the bottom up as a junior executive. And, you know, my motivation, obviously some will say that, oh, it's power hungry, that's what the perception that we have. But again, in my manifesto, I make sure that the first point itself, we've got to address this elitist perception problem that we have. So now moving on to your second question. How do I address this elitist and why am I not elitist since I was a junior executive and then I run and someone like, who, who, was, who, was, not with, who was not in UKC cannot run, etc. I think, Arafat, uh, what you're trying to say is, very, very factual, it's true. What happens is, I think I want you to understand that why people from the executive council who want to run for chairman is just solely based on experience. For example, you have to be a US senator to run for president, but don't, people don't say, hey, why is it so inclusive? Why can't I be president, right? So what I'm trying to say here is, there is a system, but obviously you, people should encourage, people like Daniel Kaffee coming here is a great encouragement. What I'm trying to say here is, you know, in order to pitch to you guys, I just think that I have the experience that I had as a junior executive. And I don't see myself as this UKC guy who is already in so I'm definitely going to win just because I was in UKC <coughs> before. So that's my proper answer. Thanks. Thank you. Now we proceed with Zuli. Okay, thank you so much. You know, going to the motivation why I want to really do this, I would say that I have to cite some of the experience. The first one, to really, really work from the bottom, from helping people to establish Aberdeen Malaysian Society, which we established two years ago, to actually being the regional chairman for Scotland. So that itself, my role as the regional chairman, there have been several glitches that we have to address, several things or issues that we need to address to connect better with the students. You know, the experience itself is so essential for you to understand what you are doing. It's so essential for you to actually understand how UKEC works. And the second part of my experience is always to understand the values and the soul of UKEC itself. Like I say, I did have, I did know one of the founders for UKEC, um, the late Adlan Benar Omar, as well as Rafizi Ramli. I did several interactions with FES, for instance, and also Shawa. It's not so much about building legacy, for instance, or doing um, something that the people before me are doing, but it's about understanding their values, understanding the principles that they really want to bring in UKEC. That is why the idea of non-partisanship, the real idea of non-partisanship itself in UKEC, extends beyond collaborative efforts. We are taking, we are saying to people that we give meaning to the voice of the students. We say that we want to create values and make people understand the values. But have we done enough? For 19 years, UKEC has been a very good job. But we cannot be content and comfortable with what we have right now. If we say that we are one of the largest student organizations out of Malaysia, we should go beyond that. We should expand our horizons. If we are saying that we are non-partisanship, go beyond collaborative efforts. We take stands in social issues, for instance. That is basically what UKEC is all about. To make sure things you cannot do as an individual, we gather you and give voice to, your, to, to yourself. Things that you cannot do, do as a person, you come and meet UKEC, for instance, to give voice, to give meaning to the voice that you have. That is basically the values or the mission that I have for UKEC. I need to make or get this across to you, the vision that I have for UKEC, to make sure that it will be much easier for us to do the changes later on. To make sure it will be much easier for us to do some other events or activities later on. 
But first, we need to understand the reasons why UKEC is there in the first place. What I can offer to you is not just the experience from the bottom line, it's not just about the values of UKEC, <coughs> but it's also about the ambitions as well as the reality of UKEC. That is why the focus is always on the flagship events as well as making sure all these four portfolios work in hand to make sure it's a cohesion that can achieve the objective of UKEC. <coughs> The second part of your question about elitism, this is where we need to understand that empowering regional influence is very, very important. If we are so inclusive, uh, exclusive or we are so practicing elitism, we would not be having an open debate like this for people outside of UKC to come and to voice out their ideas about UKC. We will always have flagship events that only cater the needs of UKEC. But right now, we are doing for the beneficiaries of UKEC, which is the students themselves. That is why we need to understand the soul of UKEC itself, together with the foundations, the four portfolios that we have, we emerge together. And this is something that I offer to you, that we have to come together with the soul and also the foundations of UKEC. Thank you. Thank you, Zuri. Mr. and Daniel. All right. Alright, so the turning point for me to run for UK chairman is actually to solve problems. As I said before, the first problem for the UKEC, still, most of the Malaysian students do not know what is UKEC. It's from observation, it's from statistics. So I want to make sure that this UKEC is well known by all the Malaysian students in UK. And the second point is, I want to make sure that the safety of the Malaysian students in UK are in my high priority. For example, there are some cases, I asked my friend, there are some cases, they are being robbed, they are being beaten. So I want to make sure that this thing will not happen, All right? Okay, and the third one is, I want to make sure that the Malaysian students do not face any academic problems. For example, either they are good students or bad students, they might have a lecture that is not really good in teaching. And they do, they do nothing, they do not make any complaints or reports. Thus, it will affect their performance results. So, if I will elect the chairman, I want to make sure that this thing will not happen. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Now, next question from the floor, so hi. Um, okay, I seem to be asking this question um, every year simply because a lot of people have this misconception that UKC's money is unlimited. But what people often forget is that our money comes from corporate sponsors and this money is put into UKC with responsibilities. Therefore, a lot of things that you guys have been talking about today sounds all well and good and very jolly, but in terms of practicality wise, I'm not too sure how viable it is. Um, when you're actually in office and when you realise that given the calendar that we have, everything that you've said here today may not be achievable at the very end. So my question is essentially this, from what you've been talking about, I don't get the sense that all of you have got a clear idea on how to draw the line between pressing for students' needs and pleasing the corporate sponsors and their needs. So my question is that when faced with this situation, how would you approach it and why would you approach it that way? Thanks, all right. So, any candidate would like to take the question first? Yeah. Sure. Um, thanks, all right. Uh, when, when I say how we're going to maintain a balance between obtaining corporate sponsors and then representing the students' interests, I think it's very easy for someone to sort of put them at conflict. I think it's very easy to say that, you know, if you want to satisfy corporate sponsors, you've got to ne not necessarily represent what the students want. But what, I, what I'm trying to bring up to you guys here is, why not focus on the common grounds that both corporate sponsors and the students' interests um, is about? For example, if I, like if I want to pitch to a corporate sponsor, I'll say, like I said, I, want, I have 15,000 students, you want their CVs, come to us. And when I tell the students, you want to make sure you get internships, come to us. They send us your CVs and then we'll make sure they pass it on to these corporate sponsors. And what I'm trying to say here is there's, there shouldn't be any conflict. Basically, there shouldn't be any conflict between obtaining corporate sponsors and addressing your student needs. So I think Swipe's question mainly also evolved around the whole how we're going to do financial strength and everything, how, we, how we're not so aware of how financial strain we are. Mm. Again, I'll come back again to my point about how we're going to save for a lot of costs, defensive and offensive. 
So I guess my point has revolved around that question already, and uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Zuri, would you like to read the question? Thank you so much, Suhaib, for the question. Uh, one thing that we need to understand is that UKEC itself represents 11,474 Malaysian students in the UK. That is the fact that you need to understand. 11,474. <coughs> our beneficiaries is always the students. In the end, we want to benefit our students as much as possible. That is the reason on our priority. Getting our priority right as well as getting the balance right. We need to understand what the students really want. We need to understand our role as UKEC, as a student's movement. At the same time, we need to understand what the corporate sponsors want. That is self-understanding all of the needs that the beneficiaries as well as what the stakeholders want. I would say that it might be a, a difficult task but it is not possible and not practical to let the sponsors know, for instance, what the students want. But in terms of the financial stability of UKEC itself, like I say, is to redefine the impact of flagship events. Why flagship events? Why flagship events? Two reasons. The first one is because the flagship events are the events that touch the hearts of the students the most. Career Fair, you have Project Amanat Negara, you have MSS, MSLS. How do you want to cut the spendings? Again, you do not have to make UKEC uh, the flagship event as so glamorous as it is. Making it in the venues that we cannot afford. But to actually make sure we understand the impact that we have on the students. Which is why, next week, one week from now, during AGM, during the election, I will tell you two major things that we are going to do for the students. But right now, I need to make sure that the idea itself is practical as well as understanding the values of UKEC, what UKEC wants, what UKEC is all about. So those are the things that are very practical to find the balance right, to ensure that you cater the needs of everyone, as well as to actually make sure we focus more on the impacts of the flagship events rather than the scale of the event. For the past seven years, we have never failed to actually make our events bigger and bigger. But we tend to forget what are the souls of that particular event. What UKC is all about. You know, for instance, who does know where, where did UKC first started um, Care Fair, for instance? Is the chairman before one field house. Do you know that? We need to understand why the events we have in the first place. And that's the reason why we can actually make sure the events I have the impact on the students. And this overall will ensure the sustainability of UKEC itself. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. I think everyone's now in anticipation to hear those two magic ideas right yes, now. Yes, sure. So, um, now the next candidate, would Mohamed like to take a show? I think here balance is key when it comes to um, sponsors and students. I feel that UKEC needs the backing of the students. I feel that with the backing of the students, we have leverage over our sponsors. I feel the reason why we're so attractive to our sponsors, the reason why we appeal to our sponsors, is because we have the backing of the students. If we continue with that backing, if we continue with that support from the Supreme Councillors, from the 11,000 students in the UK, the sponsors will not have a choice but to listen to us instead. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ahmad. Now we'll move to the next question from the floor. Yes, Ira? Um, hi, uh, actually, this question is addressed to Shahul. Um, I'm interested in what you said about UKC partnering with UK student unions. However, I'm a bit concerned um, wouldn't that sort of, um, re sort of emphasize people's perception of UKC being elitist if we are collaborating with? UK student unions, you know, instead of probably my least popular pleasure back home in Malaysia. So, yeah. uh, first of all, thanks, Sarah, for the question. I think <coughs> it does not reinforce the elitist image, mainly because when I talk about, if, if I come from a university called SOAS, 
And our student unions are very, very grassroots. We wear t-shirts, you know, we sell coffee next door and stuff like that. So what I'm trying to say here is, student unions does not necessarily reinforce the disconnect. Regarding your point about how we're going to involve the local students, like we were involved in MSLS together, and I realized that those most of the crowd there were not really people from here, they were actually people from local universities. So I think that, that section will be also be addressed because I also said, you know, instead of doing all this elitist stuff that we do with UK student unions, yes, I'm also open to the fact that we have to work with local students um, back home. But then, one of the main things here, we have to make sure we represent the students' interests. And what students want here is more international events, more stuff that, the stuff that is out of the bubble of, you know, being these cool kids on the block of these Malaysian students here in the UK. What we need is to branch out. We've got to go to the UK student unions. They're not doing this, I can assure you. And, you know, UK student unions, I know it sounds very fancy and stuff, but what I'm trying to say is that they are, they are unions, you know. Unions basically is a very leftist kind of concept if you're familiar with it. So basically they come up with their own funds and stuff like that. So I don't see that as elitist. If you say corporations, yes, I think it's elitist. If you say things like Goldman Sachs, yes, I think it's elitist. But you say student unions, no, I don't think so. So thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Aaron and Eric, a question. Uh, next question from the floor. Okay, if there are any questions, um, now since, actually, previously when we had the chairman's debate between two candidates, there will be the question of, you know, what makes you better than your candidates, but seeing as four, we'll try a bit different this year. So what we'll do is, I'll give each candidate the opportunity to ask one question to another candidate. So you have the option to either ask to all three, or you can direct to one. So now I will proceed with Louis. Okay. Uh, yeah. Question, right? You can either ask to you can direct to just one or two or I see. Okay. Two panel. So I have a question to all of you. First thing, what do you guys really understand about UKEC, as well as how do you see your manifestos? are going to be practical because we are going to have only one year. So how do you see your manifestos to be practical and to be implemented during your term? And what will happen if you fail to actually achieve your manifestos? And you want to go first, Mohamed? Thank you, Gashin Zuli. Um, so it comes down to my vision for UKC and what my manifesto will be. Mm -hmm. UKC to me is about student empowerment. So my manifesto will be channeled towards, towards around student empowerment. I feel that UKC will need to be more progressive in our events. We need to be more diversified. We need to be open to what we do. We need to be more creative in how we do it. We need to engage the students. We need to maintain our relevance. We need to exert our influence in each society, in each region. Once we do that, we can have this UKEC where it's for everyone. We can uh, address this misperception of elitism. We can, we can achieve greater things. We can have UKEC where it's not just about politics, it's not just about economics, it's also about the social events and the community outreach. Thank you. Second part. What is your Second part you, is don't, you don't do your manifestos. Oh. Yes. Okay. Okay. A part of my manifesto. Part of question. Part of my manifesto <laughs> is establishing an independent body for our key performance key performance indicator in the chairman's office. My manifesto will be released later today or tomorrow, and in that sense, this independent body will report to the supreme councillors. And if the supreme councillors are not happy in what I don't achieve they are welcome to open a motion of vote of no confidence in the OGM. That's how I feel. Thank you. Thank you, um, Who would like to take the question next? I'll take it. Cheryl? Yeah. Um, wait, so there are three parts for the question. All right, first is practicality, mm -hmm. right? All right, in terms of practicality, I've already said since I first spoke here how I connected my ideals with practical short-term goals that i already given up, the power and everything that I've said. Um, so that's my practicality issue resolved, I think, because I've spoken a lot about that. I connected those ideas that I have 
the stuff that these guys have been saying with real concrete stuff that I think we can achieve in the short term. Secondly, if I fail my manifesto, or what? I think so. Okay. I wouldn't have run if I know that I'm going to fail my manifesto because I think this manifesto covers a diverse range of issues. Like I said, ideals, concrete. Ideals, concrete. This is how you should lead. This is how you should actually achieve short term. And I know it's one year. That's why all my goals are not over ambitious. My goals, I said, work with UK student unions, do Project Managari as a one-month thing instead of doing it one day and, and one event and spend so much in one hotel. So I would... I would question you back on like how you say fail my manifesto because I don't think that's a relevant question because I wouldn't have put out a manifesto if I thought it was going to fail. So uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, and lastly, Daniel. All right. So from my understanding, UKC is actually a platform for the Malaysian students in UK and Ireland to deal with any situations. So in terms of practicality. There is no way so we can guarantee that we're going to get what we want. So, but what we can promise you is we try to achieve the goal. Yeah, about the failing the manifesto is, let's say if I fail my manifesto itself, if, then we should go and check the reason, all the factors and all the reasons behind that. And we should improve it. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Daniel. Now we'll proceed with Daniel with questions to the other candidates. Okay. So, any of you two would like to take the floor first? Yeah. Any questions? Cheryl? Uh, okay. Uh, my questions will be to all three candidates. Um, assuming that, you know, you, you guys have been saying a lot about how you guys should progress, how we should um, spread our message, and how, you know, students should know more about this. What, you know, we've heard that for two years in a row from previous chairman candidates. What makes yours different this time? We've heard the same kind of sentence, some even quotes that I've heard from previous videos. So what, what, what makes yours different than the previous two years chairman candidate? Thank you. What makes me different from the chairman's past year is my experiences. None of the chairman's past three years have been in the Supreme Council. They don't understand, they might understand, but they don't fully understand what the Supreme Council has won. They don't know the problems that we face as Supreme Councillors. They don't know what it's like being a Supreme Council, how hard it is to actually micromanage 100 to 500 students in your society. So when we come back down to the root of the problem, it's what is different here is not the idea, but implementation. The idea has always been the same. The idea has always been about student empowerment, about student activism, and it all comes down to the implementation of how we actually, um, how we actually solve the problem at hand. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mohamed. Zuri, would you like to take the question? Like I mentioned just now, there are four things I can offer you as an individual. The first thing is the experience that I have to start from the very bottom line, helping to establish Aberdeen Malaysian Society, as well as being the regional chairman of Scotland. That is the experience. I got the benefits of both worlds. Because being in the Executive Council, as well as being in the Aberdeen Malaysian Society, or in fact establishing Aberdeen Malaysian Society, that is the first one. Second thing is always to understand the values of UKEC. It's not just the values that you understand when you speak with people, what I call as the modern of UKEC. But you need to understand that we have been carrying for the past 19 years the principles that we are still holding. That's the second thing. The third thing is always to make sure that you understand what is your vision and ambition for UKEC. And hence why we need the fourth one. The reality to make sure your ambitions will be very practical to cater the rest of other things, to make sure your ambitions are very practical and also fulfill the values of UKEC. But I guess what I would say that makes me different is always, always the fact that you need to understand why, do you, why are you doing the changes again. It goes back to the fact that understanding the values of UKEC. 
we can talk. I can promise you giving up so many events we are going to organize, doing so many changes. If you don't understand our role, you can see itself, what's the point? There is something that I hope all of us can ponder. There is the reason why, why I see this championship debate as the reason how do you want to know me, where I come from, my character and also my vision. And my manifestos will be released during uh, the election because I want you to understand the soul of UKEC itself rather than immediately making a lot of changes. Thank you. Thank you. And Daniel? Right. What makes the difference for me is I will look at the root of the, fact of the problem itself and try to find a way to solve that problem. That's the main thing, root. And the second thing is, <coughs> what, makes the, what makes the difference between me and the past chairman is, I have a lot of experience in many fields such as manufacturing, entertainment, etc. And from that past experience, I might have a better ideas to lead UKEC. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, next candidate to take the peak. Big stage for the questions. Okay, we'll like to. All right. So my question to you all. All right. So, how many percents that you can guarantee that all of you can achieve your manifesto? Roughly, yeah. Thank you. Daniel, can you talk to percentage? How much? <laughs> roughly, how many percentage? Okay. Uh, yeah. Percent. And either it's fifty percent, half, or either it's quarter, or either it's like seventy, eighty percent. How can you can guarantee that you can re achieve your manifesto? Thank you. Um, I think it's impossible to quantitatively say <laughs> my odds lah for it because it's gonna happen. I don't know for a whole year. I think it's impossible. You. It's not like I'm calculating odds, like, oh, am I going to get to LSE in the next two years or something like that. It's not, it's totally different. This is something a lot more complex, but for the sake of the discussion and the questions, you know, I wouldn't want to be too cocky. I wouldn't want to say it's 100%. I'll probably go 99.9. <laughs> Thanks for being accurate. Um, okay, next candidate, please. Would you like to answer, Zui? Sure. I guess the same question that Daniel just um, asked me will also address um, Charlotte's question towards me back on, you know, why would I be here if I know that I cannot achieve my manifestos? Again and again, what I did for the past one week or even before this is to understand what UKEC is all about, to understand the practicality of my manifestos. If you know me personally, you would not know that I would not promise to you something that is not relevant, something that is not practical. That's because you don't know me. That's why I see this platform as the best way for you to get to know me. Maybe you can see after this, you can put my phone number on the website and then we can have a more meaningful conversation about UKC. But what I'm trying to, say, to, to, to tell you again is about the things that I can offer to you about understanding of UKEC first thing. It's about what do you actually want, and also the reality of UKEC. We can always promise you so many things. We can say to you that these are the things we are going to do. But are they practical enough if you do not understand what UKEC is all about? That is why today I've told you the contingency fund, for instance, for students in distress is very, very practical, and it will be put directly under UKEC CARES. Because, again and again, during AGM, you would always get the financial review and financial re report, and you see that it's very practical. I'm not saying that we are going to give 2,000 students, uh, 2,000 pounds to one student. That's a bit illogical because we are a student's movement and we are not like a company. But again, a small contribution to show that we really care about our students, we really care about our beneficiaries. Two more manifestos, the reason why I do not want to release right now is because I need to make sure that two other manifestos are very practical and relevant with all of you. So I hope you guys can wait during the election and I'll let you know the practicality of two other manifestos. Thank you. Thanks, Rui. So we'll go to the last round of questions from Muhammad. Last round of questions. Uh, just from the candidates. 
from the candidates. To the candidates. To the candidates. This is pretty much to Cheryl and um, Daniel. I don't, for Daniel, I don't really understand what you mean when you can say you're going to try and help. We you say you will make sure that it won't happen. The welfare of students will be compromised. Studies of students will be compromised. How do you actually plan on doing that? And for Cheryl, for your pun, I don't see, on a personal opinion, I don't see it as being feasible and sustainable. So what are your views on that? Okay, we're getting the question. Thank you very much. So, if there is a problem happening, so, first of all, I will make a survey. Take the survey from samples from all the students, not all, I mean like some of the students regarding their problems. And from that, we got the reasons why the problem is happening. And again, the best way is to find the best way to solve the problems. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Daniel. Carol? For me, um, the question about this pun thing, it's a very general question you can ask to any policymaker. You don't see it being feasible. So what I can tell you is the facts. Again, straight up facts of how we can actually do it. Okay, Project Amana Nagara takes up a lot of money. Imagine booking a ballroom in central London. Imagine getting all the food for, I don't know, hundreds of students. Imagine paying for all the reimbursement for the trips for people to come to London. Imagine paying for the speakers to fly to London, return ticket, speaking fees. Let's cut that, okay? This, this has been a great thing, it has been a great event. But what I'm trying to say here is let's focus those funds on something more feasible. I think those things of going around regions and working with students is, a lot, is not only very relevant to you guys, but it's also very feasible. Instead of paying for a return ticket, Pay for a like, venue cut Bristol or something and have student debates. How is that not feasible? So I would ask back politely to Muhammad. That feasibility question, it's very easy to say that it's not feasible. But I've already given you the facts. This is what this is what actually UKC actually spends. Reimbursement, paying for trips all the way to come to London, return, maybe they fly Emirates, maybe they fly business cars, I don't know. But what I'm trying to say here is it's very obvious and I've spoken to the seniors and I consulted them about the feasibility. It says it's possible. Funds can be focused on something more important, like going to you guys instead of asking all of you to come to London. So that's my answer to the question. Thank you. Can I? Thank you. Uh, this like, you would like to, yeah? Um, I understand that you may think it's feasible, but in the long run, do you see a 30 day plan as being sustainable for, the, for years to come? It's, it's not a 30 day plan. It's, uh, it's four regions, so four different events throughout a month. Lah. So it's a one month to initiative, as in like maybe one week we focus on promotion, then the next week one of the days of that week we do it in four different regions. Let's start with four first. Lah. So it's not a 30 day thing, and I don't think we spend money each day. We spend money to book the room and etc. Exactly, I'm just giving you facts. So it's not going to be a 30, 30 day event, moment, and it's going to be a four day event most probably. And it's going to involve a wider approach, a wider audience. Instead of you guys just sending two people from your societies, why don't we go there and engage with 30 of your own society members, your grassroots freshers, for example. So that's my answer. And I think it's really answer. Yeah. Uh, before that, uh, just to note, um, in, with reference to PAN, you can see this not have a policy to pay for the returning tickets. Usually, initially, when we started to expand PAN, what we do was even in the emergency uh, circumstances where the speakers could get accommodation, where we would pay for the accommodation, but as of last year, we did not spend anything on the accommodation and also for flights of the speakers. So, Zuli, would you like to yeah. continue? Okay. Uh, I'm very interested with Cheryl's idea about making regional Project Amanat Negara. My question is very simple. Project Amanat Negara has been there for 19 years, since 1994. What is the difference between your regional project Amanat Negara with the ministerial talks that we have right now? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Basically, it's very different from. The, wait. Let me uh, address Fez's point first. Uh, I'm sorry for that mistake. Uh, what I was trying to do is to prove a point, lah. Trying to prove a point that instead of concentrating on funds and bringing people over, let's do something more grassroots. Okay. Moving on to Zoli's question. Um, it's different from ministerial talk, mainly because it could be anything. That's the magic. Because Amanagara, it's like he said, it's like having meaning of 
celebrating what you actually do for your country, for example. So it does, it, it's so different from ministerial talk in terms of you pangi minister come to talk in Scotland and then you just talk and stuff like that. We could do anything. It could be student debates. It could be forums. It could be quizzes. It could be anything that engages UKC with the students. Because that's my motivation. Is you've got to make sure that your grassroots members, all the Supreme Council members, your grassroots members know what UKC does. That's my purpose. My purpose is not to call people to come and have fancy stuff. My purpose is to make sure you guys know what UKC stands for. That's why I said, you know, the regional kind of event is so much, so, so different from a ministerial talk. Ministerial talk, you do it, you listen, it's a very passive kind of thing. People just talk to you. What I'm trying to say, you engage more, you have student debates, those kind of things. So that's all I'm saying, Thanks. All right. Thanks, Aaron. And with that, that ends the, the session. So before that, let's have a closing remark from each candidate. So I will allocate two minutes to each candidate just to give a winding up of the manifesto and what you want to say. So this time we'll start with Mohamed. Thanks. Thank you, Fess. Thank you for coming to me again. Um, my, the reason why my manifesto is not out is because I want you to see what it's like being here, what our ideas are instead of lacking is for what we stand for instead of liking it for who our friends are. And I think that with my experiences being in the SC and the EC, I have the vision to progress UKC further. And with this, um, please vote for me. Thank you. Carol? <laughs> my closing statement will be short and concise. What I've said all today, I think the main thing that I want you guys to know is that I think my ideals and my concrete um, processes are the most viable options that we have for UKC right now. I think UKC can be very stagnant thing. Sometimes it could be very stagnant in like, in terms of we rely on certain flagship events. I think it's time for change. That's why my um, slogan is engaging change. You're gonna make sure that we embrace the breakthroughs. You're gonna make sure people who are different, who are more diverse, get into UKC. And I wanna be that person to facilitate that process. I wanna engage the change for you guys. So, yeah, vote for me if you trust what I've said today and if you understand what are my motivations. Because I made sure I presented the facts to you guys. I made sure I let you guys know how it actually works. If you agree and I've been transparent about it, please vote for me. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Daniel, I'll let you go next. All right. So, I'm a person who always go to a simple and basic uh, solutions to solve our problems. And if you do trust me, then just vote for me. Thank you very much. As a person, four things I can offer to you, the experience, the values, the ambitions, and also the reality of UKEC. I want this to be the, flat, the platform for you to get to know me better, the visions I want to carry for UKEC, as well as my personal outlook, where I come from, who am I? There is one stranger talking about UKEC here and there. So I really want you to understand the vision I have for UKEC, which is why the tagline itself is about strengthening, reinforcing foundations and reviving ideas. We strengthen the foundation, we inject some souls to it, and this, I can guarantee you, will ensure the sustainability of UKEC, and it's going to be really, really relevant 20 years down the line. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. And thank you to all the candidates uh, for participating in today's debate. And so that marks the end of today's championship debate. I'd like to thank everyone for coming here today. I would also like to thank Derek and the UCL Malaysia Society for assisting us in today's debate in hosting at this venue. And thanks again. And hope to see all of you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.